Hey guys, thanks for stopping by and checking this out again. Today I'm going to be doing a quick show of the Dragonlock modular buildings. Now these are a 3D printed buildings. You can download the STL files uh, for a cost, for a small cost. They come in different packs depending on what you want. But you can get them off a of drive through RPG or directly from uh, the Dragonlock website, I believe. So... Uh, what are they? Well, they are 3D printed buildings for the most part. And as you can see, they uh, they look pretty good. Uh, you are, of course, responsible for painting them up and trying to make them look as good as possible on your own. Uh, over here in the light, you can see a little bit better detail here. So I have used just some normal craft paints for these, as well as uh, some ink. And uh, I didn't really get... Uh, too in-depth with them or try and take my time to make them look spectacular. I just want to get them done. Mainly I use these for uh, Dungeons & Dragons with my group that we play. And uh, I have lately been dreaming of using them for 28mm Napoleonic Skirmish as well as some other skirmish games. So that's why I have decided to go ahead and start printing up a lot of different buildings uh, and seeing what kind of different designs I can come up with. Now these are the regular timber framed buildings. As, as you can see it's kind of a white um, white form with surrounded by the timbers in place. Uh, these, can, these buildings can be used for you know your English Civil War, Medieval, Dungeons and Dragons Fantasy, Napoleonics, uh, even World War II potentially. So there's a lot of different use you can get out of these. Um, basically, each section you print is a you print this single wall right here, and this wall. These are all individual pieces along with these corner posts, and then the floors that you print out. They have holes for the posts to put in, and then you just slide the walls right in. You can glue them in place, or you can leave them separate if you want to change buildings frequently. I find that even if you don't glue them in, they still uh, hang in there pretty good. They're not something that's just going to fall apart on you. They're actually pretty uh, pretty tough to take out. Um, you see this floor would rather come off than that wall come out. So, uh, yeah, everything in this, including the furniture, is 3D printed. And you can go around here and you can kind of see there's a stairwell right there. There's not a lot of room there in that stairwell. I, I, you know, this is my first two-story building, so I'm kind of experimenting to see what works and what doesn't. But um, you can see you can, you can uh, print out open windows with or without those uh, panes inside, uh, with or without the shutters swung open. So you have some open windows down there, another one down on this side right here. And you can see an example of some closed windows right there on that side. So that's one example of the building. And you can see right here it has the one roof slanted upwards. Well, there is going to be another roof. However, the roofs on the second floor are going to be angled this way. So it'll give, a, give it, I think, a... Uh, it, it'll make it stand out, you know, just more different angles of the roofs. They're not just lopsided uh, or single, single slope buildings like this all facing one direction. So there'll be plenty of variety in there as well. Um, going back over here, we can just take a look on the inside here. And you've already obviously seen the, uh, the first or the second floor here. But you can see some of the stuff I printed up, a bookshelf. Uh, hanging right there. I also have a nightstand with a book on it that I need to paint and put in there. Uh, a dresser for this room. And you can furnish them up very, very nicely. Uh, so they, they've been very fun to use in Dungeons & Dragons, actually. So if we take off the first floor, you can see the building itself in here. And you notice I still need to do a door and a door lintel for that doorway. So I will put it in there. I haven't painted everything yet. I'm still working on it. You can see here's a little uh, cupboard with some, I don't know, plates and some cups or something on the top shelf. I don't know what the heck it is. And we have the stair, the stairways, of course. We have a little dining table, basically, with a couple chairs right there. And another pantry there, back in there, behind the corner. So... 
that's how that works. It's pretty simple to do. You know, you just pop the pop the floors on as you need to. Leave the roof on if there's nobody in there. Whatever you need to do. And uh, it works out pretty good, I think. So, that is the building I'm currently working on. Will it, will it focus? Nobody knows. There it goes. There's the focus. So, that's the building I'm currently working on. It's almost done. The only thing I really need to do is paint up a little bit more of the furniture, do the door, as I've already said, and then finish off this roof. I already have the walls for the roof done. Um, I actually only need to print out a foundation that those walls will plug into. I completely forgot about that. So, uh, going on to the second building, which was actually the first building I ever printed off here. And you can see uh, there's a lantern there next to the door, and I added some ivory uh, kind of creeping up those timbers around that window there. And uh, I think that gives it a really good, uh, some really good flavor there. So my focus does not want to cooperate today for some reason. There we go. So there's that. It has a little chimney on it, as you can see. Let me see if I can do this one-handed. I can. So I did leave some Dungeons and Dragons miniatures in there just for uh, to show you the scale of these and um, uh, what the miniatures look like inside there. So you can see this is kind of more of a tavern building, and I have some more tables, booths, corner booths to put in there. Uh, I do have a couple more things to add into this this building before it's done, but you can see it comes out very nice. Uh, once again, everything in this building, with the exception of those miniatures, are 3D printed. You can see a little fish decoration hanging on the wall there. So there is a tremendous amount of items that you can print out from these sets to give the buildings more flavor or to you know turn them into the type of building that you want it to represent. So... There's a lot of different stuff there. I just can't get that focus to really work. You can see I painted up those bottles, put some labels on them and stuff like that. There's a little fireplace which matches up with the chimney that sticks up out of the top of the ceiling. And I did kind of show this building off in one of my painting videos, my painting updates. But I really didn't take the time to explain it. But like I said, these are all individual pieces, so you can make buildings of all different shapes and sizes, as many stories as you want. You could have a 20-story building if you got a big enough house to put it in. I mean, you can do whatever you want with these. So it is a truly modular system, and there is different kits that allow you to add um, balconies. If you wanted to put a wall with a door here, you could add a balcony here with little handrails around the side of it. Um, you could do, you could take another building right here, basically print out a second building right here with a road running through it and have a little walkway going in between like those sheltered walkways, the covered walkways, like what you would see in like a carriage house, for instance. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do. I have, I did buy their stone road system, which, um, is modular and it has sidewalks and the, and the cobblestone roads and everything else. Uh, I did print out one section of it. I forgot to bring it over here, but um, it uh, it came out. Excuse me, it came out a little cruddy with some holes in it. I think I need to replace the nozzle on my printer. It's kind of giving me some common symptoms of that. It's clicking, not feeding thoroughly, and it's kind of having patchy prints right now. So I do have another nozzle, thankfully, on hand because. Amazon right now they're taking like a month to ship non-essentials due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic so I did order another roll of PLA and it's not going to be here until April 18th so and I ordered that a week ago by the way so we're looking at four weeks basically for a, a roll of plastic and that's with the Amazon Prime the two-day shipping <laughs> so anyway it is what it is can't get mad I guess but uh, yeah, so that is the Dragonlock 3D Prints modular building system. They make all sorts of stuff. Dungeons, caves. I mean, I have a whole bunch of stuff. If you guys want to see more, I have a whole cave system right here uh, in this box with more that I haven't painted up yet. Um, I have a tremendous amount of dungeon pieces uh, that you could use for even like the inside of a castle or something like that. So 
there is a tremendous amount of stuff that you can do with the dragon lock system and if you guys ever are interested if you want to see like my uh, miniature collection for D, &D um, that I that I use regularly for Dungeons and Dragons when I host over at my house uh, or if a friend who actually DMs most of our games if he needs to borrow creatures I got a whole bunch of creatures lined up for him but uh, yeah so I got a bunch of stuff that I use for D&D &D. see there some of that is uh, 3d printed oh you know what there is a door I think that's for one of my caverns so yeah that is that's definitely not a house door so you can see bags bags of grain or whatever uh, wood bricks a whole bunch of different stuff so anyway that's it uh, if you're interested in seeing more let me know if you got any other questions let me know but that's it guys thanks for checking it out and i'll see you later